Hello there my fellow earth humans. I hope you're all doing well and welcome to another video where I blab about something that I found interesting. Today we're gonna talk about the most real life anime character I have ever come across to date. Our protagonist of the day served in three wars including both world wars. He survived getting shot in the leg, hip, stomach and the head, had a piece of his ear blown clean off. He had his left hand amputated, lost an eye and wore an eye patch. I know exactly what you're thinking right now and the answer is no, it's not Captain Hook. It is Adrian Corden de Viert, and our man was the son of a Belgian aristocrat. He spent his early life between Belgium, England and Egypt. But his real story began when he faked his name and age to sign up for the army when he was just 19 years old. He joined the Boer War. And straight off the bat he was injured in the stomach and the groin and was sent home. At this point, any normal 19 year old would just call it a day on his army career. But not this particular 19 year old. Nope. This guy was anything but normal. After completing his recovery, he was sent to India for a couple of years and then to South Africa where he stayed for like 10 years before they sent him to Somalia. And in Somalia, he got himself shot again. This time he was shot in the face. Twice. As a result, he lost his left eye and got his ear blown off. So just to sum up, up to this point, our guy was already shot like four times, blind in one eye and missing a piece of his ear. And then came the Great War. Yup. All that was before he got involved in world wars. Fast forward to 1915 and our boy Adrian got shipped to France, where he found himself in the unfortunate situation of fighting on the front line where his side had no one given orders, because all the commanding officers were too dead to give orders. Quite the unfortunate situation, but thankfully our boy Adrian being the main character decides to take things into his own hands. He doesn't just assume command of one battalion, no no no, that would be too easy. He takes over three infantry battalions, all of which had lost their CEO and apparently kept going back and forth between them and organizing them, exposing himself to heavy enemy fire and risking his life all to defend the ground that they had. He was given the Victoria Cross for his trouble. And newspapers wrote articles about him praising his bravery. Naturally, he was shot seven more times during the First World War. And due to one of his many injuries, the fingers on his left hands needed to get amputated. But for some reason, the doctor treating him refused to do it. So our guy just removed him himself. Yep, just pulled him off by himself. Nothing to see here. He lost his left hand, obviously, got shot in the skull and ankle during the Somme. Man, this guy's head was like a bullet magnet. Maybe HNG Cone of Fire was historically accurate after all. It's like the fifth time he got shot in the head already and we're not even done with World War I yet. He got shot again, this time in the hip and the leg. And in the ear one more time for good measure before the First World War was over. There you go, another headshot. Our guy stayed on the army's books until 1924, serving on the English mission in Poland. During that time, he casually survived the plane crash as well as serving a bit of a prison time in Lithuania. And while traveling by train, he was attacked by Russian cavalry. So naturally, he takes out his service revolver and starts shooting them down from the back of the train. He falls off the train and despite the fact that he was shot like 17 times through the legs, hips and ankles already, he managed to get up, run and reboard the train. You know, most of us sit in a cubicle in front of a computer screen for 9 hours a day to earn a living. The most exciting portion of our average day is dinner. And oh boy, if it's family dinner on the weekend, that could be real unpredictable. Sure, you can work with your hands, be a vet, a mechanic or a lumberjack like JMJ. But this guy's like something else. This dude has seen more action in the first half of his life than we probably will in our entire lives combined. Anyways. He retired from the army and spent the next 15 years in Poland, living on an estate that was given to him by one of the friends he made while serving there. During that time he said that he didn't waste a single day without hunting. Then came World War II and Adrian was smack dab in the middle of it. As he was leaving Poland with the rest of the British mission, he was pursued by both the Germans and the Soviets. And he was attacked by the Luftwaffe while on the road. Somehow managed to evade arrest and he got out of the danger zone by using a fake passport in Romania. He was then recalled to the army. In 1940 he was leading the English-French force tasked to take and occupy a small town in Norway called Namsos. The attack was supposed to be carried out with support from the navy. Adrian flew in first to survey the area, but as his plane landed it was immediately attacked by a German fighter. And that was just the beginning of this disaster of an operation. The main force which was made up of French Alpine troops that were supposed to be elite mountain infantry trained specifically to fight in mountainous areas and urban warfare. But they landed missing equipment, mainly the straps for their skis. As you can imagine trying to traverse the Norwegian landscape without skis in half a meter of snow did not go quite well. Especially when the Germans had their required gear. They had naval and air cover, cause guess what? The Allied naval assault that was supposed to kickstart the whole operation 
Never happened. And then the clever Germans realized that Adrian and his troops were cut off. So the German Navy landed troops behind him to lock him in on two fronts. Naturally, Adrian asked for the withdrawal order, but to make matters even worse, he was told to hold his position. Apparently, the war command back home couldn't take the loss for political reasons. Miraculously, Adrian did manage to keep a hold of the position for weeks before the order was finally given to evacuate. The night the evacuation was supposed to happen, the ships didn't show up. Thankfully, they did finally show up the following day. And the evacuation happened successfully, yes, but under heavy fire from the Germans. As a result, two Allied destroyers were sunk. 1941, he was heading the British mission to aid Yugoslavia against the German invasion. His plane crashed. Again. Only this time he was off the coast of Libya and was taken by Italian forces. He was then transferred to a special prison for senior officers in Italy. He spent about two years in captivity during which he attempted to escape five times. He spent seven months digging a tunnel. And one time he actually got out of prison and managed to stay undetected by the Italian authorities for eight days pretending to be an Italian peasant while being a 62 year old British officer with one eye, one hand and being unable to speak a single word of Italian. Just a freaking pirate walking around town for eight days. If this guy's life story was a movie, I would think it was too unrealistic. But don't you worry, the guy's story gets a whole lot weirder. Because apparently in 1943, the Italians wanted out of the war, so they wanted our boy to head with one of their generals to a secret meeting with the Allies to negotiate a peace treaty. Naturally, because the meeting is a secret, he could not wear his formal military uniform. So they gave him an Italian suit to wear in order for him to pose as a normal civilian. Not a big deal, right? Nothing out of the ordinary. Nope. He refused to wear the suit they gave him, saying, and I quote, I don't want to look like a gigolo. <laughs> this f***ing guy, man. He would not travel with them until they provided him with an English suit from Savile Row. He spent the last few years of the war in Southeast Asia until 1947 when he finally retired. On his way home, he stopped in Rangoon in Burma as a guest of the army commander there. And as he was going downstairs in the residence they gave him, he slipped on a coconut mat. He fell, knocked himself out and broke his back. That's right, after being shot at like 50 times, getting shot in the face repeatedly, surviving world wars and plane crashes and being attacked by the Luftwaffe on open roads, getting shelled by the German Navy and getting attacked attacked by Russian cavalry, what broke his back was a coconut rug. What is life? Adrian died in 1963, aged 83 years old. The coconut may not have killed him straight away, but it certainly managed to do more damage than the combined efforts of the German, Russian and the Italian armies. The moral of the story here is uh, don't trust coconuts. Bye.